Hi, my name is Paula Lopez. I'm a victim advocate with Homicide Survivors. Maggie, if you would like to introduce yourself and talk a little bit about your loved one. Yes, my name is Maggie. My loved one is my brother, John Jackie Roche, who was assaulted on October 19, 2017 in California. And um, this has been a really unbelievable, heartbreaking journey. So through the last, I mean, I, you know, I think I, I met you formally like a year ago, I want to say. Um, and I know that like through through it all, like you've been actively participating in our support groups and workshops. And um, one of the ways that you express um, in your healing journey that has helped you is, is writing. Tell me a little bit about that and how that came to be and, and how you discovered that. Yes. Um... I've been journaling for a long time. When I looked at my notebooks, I had like over a hundred. Um, I couldn't believe it. <laughs> and I don't know what happened, but I know when I write stuff down, you can't always tell other people what you think or feel. You don't even know the words sometimes, but by writing it, you can like get some healing. Um, Sometimes I write directly to my brother, like I would normally. Mm -hmm. And I just feel him with me that way. And it is very healing. Yeah, you've, you've shared um, some, some poetry with me. And I, I just love that you're able to, to come to any, to me, to any of our advocates and just um, share how you are able to express your, your grief and also how you been able to express hope um, in that same way where we provide that space for you um, to do both. Um, because I think one of the, the things to recognize with grief is that two emotions can coexist. And in the same way that at sometimes like one emotion, like anger or fear can be a dominant emotion. But then when you think about like the person that they were um, how your brother lived and the good things and the good memories. There's also that like part of joy that weaves into to, to your grief. Um, do you want to talk a little bit about that and how that has also helped you? Um, it, it was surprising to me when I first heard both can coexist in the same place. Like, how can that be? especially at the beginning when the grief is so strong. I, by journaling and other tools, it has brought joy into my life again. It has brought hope into my life. It has um, like expanded, strengthened me. One of the things I told the group was I was writing a, a memoir and that's been off and on. I now have a title to my memoir and it's called The Tangled Brain. And that, I don't know where I'm going with it, but I know it will help me. I like that, The Tangled Brain. <laughs> like there, it, there's so much to say with those words. Um, wherever this memoir takes you, wherever your writing takes you, I think when we are able to put thoughts on paper, like we're just able to recognize more in depth about how we're feeling um and it might not work for you know also recognizing that it might not work for everybody but there's something about like you just said when when we experience trauma and when we just love lose someone that we love so deeply like your brother for instance it's it's hard to even like communicate um to tell people how we're feeling to tell people what our needs are you know and I know like a lot of survivors have shared it's like we don't need you to say anything we just need you to come and like feel your presence we just need to know like that we have you like your physical support because like, if you're if I'm in your thoughts that's great but I want you to like show me with those actions and so there's a lot to say with even those two words right the tangled brain and how grief is not linear and what would you say is a misinterpretation of being a survivor of homicide and losing your loved one to homicide. Well, one of the things that I learned is there is no order in grief. 
There is no stages one, two, you do these and now it's over. Um, I think that um, we all grieve differently, even if you're in the same family because of your relationship to that person. Um, I've learned that I have to learn patience and to respect each other with it, especially with this due to homicide, due to murder, because in this, uh, another person took our loved one's life. Um, there's a difference with a natural death, although it's just sad and you, you need to grieve that too. But I have learned through the, uh, through the homicide survivor, um, it is more complex of a loss for murder than a natural death. There's deeper levels of denial, of shock, because the murder is so unbelievable and shocking that unexpected, um, tragic, <laughs> all at the same time. How um, are some ways that you honor your brother? Well, as we mentioned, the journaling. And uh, we also, my brother had this tree in his front yard that he loved. He called it an Irish strawberry tree, but it was a strawberry tree. So my uh, nephew and nieces let my sister and I be part of their planting a Irish strawberry tree where the assault happened, which I think has been very helpful for all of us that we now have that and we could see it now after a couple of years growing and getting the uh, flower bloom on them. And so I also, um, do a lot of arts and crafts. Um, I've written poems, which sometimes I look at them and go, wow, did I do that? But if you do it from your heart, You can. <laughs> I also go on walks. Some just walk some a lot in his memory. Um, I love to go to the ocean. Just listen to the ocean and it's very soothing and healing. Um, and then, like I said, I, I'm still working on that memoir. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and you know, like there's just so many, and I'm sure just based on like how you're feeling, um, it's based on like what you do to honor him, right? Or like what you do to take care of yourself in that realm. What is something that you would share with other survivors um, that has helped you like take care of yourself whenever you're feeling activated or whenever you're just having um, ruminating th thoughts about your brother and, and what happened to him? Wow. Um, well, there's a lot of tools that we've learned and some like breathing where I had the panic attacks. Um, you feel like you're going to die. You feel like you are dying. And then when you find out it's not a heart attack, you're having a panic attack. You do have to learn ways to deal with that. I, I didn't want to do it with medicine. So breathing was one of the big things that have helped me. And I know my brother, when I would get anxious, he would say, just breathe, Maggie. And I'm like, I am. <laughs> That's why I'm here. And I didn't understand. And so I've learned and now I know also when I'm starting to go into a panic attack. So you do that before you get into it, which is a lot easier. I've done where you look at the colors and all that goes with that. Um, 
I also have faith. Um, I have found my faith has grown stronger. It was very, I, I didn't even have it at the beginning. So it's growing stronger too. So I, that helps me. You know, one of the things that if we're open to sharing is also like that it, this didn't happen like in the first year, like it has been a process. That's true. It is a process. And like at the beginning, as I said, I couldn't, um, I couldn't think of words to even express how I felt. And I think sometimes when people ask, why is it taking so long in grieving? Like, I, I, I believe you have to go through it in order to truly understand it. Like I thought I had a big heart for other people and I did, but you don't know until you experience it yourself. So I don't get, I don't take that personal anymore. Um, it was a process. And I think as long as you stay with it, stay with your feelings. Um, I've done a lot of research, a lot of listening to other people who have been through this. I, I listen to pastors and just speakers on grief. And to know that you're not alone, I think was one of the most helpful things. It was good to be alone for a while. I think I needed that, but I went, I got too into it where I was um, isolated. Yeah. Um, there was times I couldn't eat. I lost over a hundred pounds. Um, it affects so many areas, all areas of your life. But if you keep up, what I found from myself was if I kept going to the uh, support groups, calling you guys, other people, little by little, step by step. They were baby steps. Um, I have, I believe I have survived it, survived my deep, deep depression, which was a deep, ugly hole. <clears throat> I didn't think I'd ever get out of it. You know, one of the things that we, we talk about in our support groups it's just like you mentioned it's okay to have a bad day it's okay to feel sad to be, be depressed but to not to find a way to not stay there because we still have to take care of ourselves um and sometimes taking care of ourselves does look like staying in bed all day long um but then what are we going to do after that? Um, if it's like a five minute walk, like you said, to just take that deep breath, focus on one thing and, and like trying to move forward. Um, that That is really helpful. Like, I think that other survivors who are listening to this will find that very helpful and very healing to know that, you know, it has been a process for you. And like one step at a time is all it takes, like making those small micro shifts um, in our journey is okay. Um, and it goes back to that space that we talked about where it's like, it doesn't matter how long it takes me. Um, even if it makes my friends and family uncomfortable, like this is where I'm at and this is where I'm going. And so like staying in our trajectory of like feeling, being in our feelings, right, Maggie? Like, I feel like that's one of the things that, um, we've talked about and like you've expressed it's like i i am going to feel what i need to feel to continue doing what i need to do to improve myself with my grief um, thank you for sharing that maggie um is there anything else you would like to share there is one thing um back to the irish strawberry tree uh in one of the support groups i was in They asked, what was the worst thing that ever happened to you? And my memory, I think what kept me there was, I just kept seeing my brother laying on the ground. He was riding his bike. He went on a bike ride, which was his favorite thing. And to see him in my mind after I read the police report, on the ground in a fetal position. 
I just, that was my brother who always protected me. He taught me how to protect myself. That's one of the hard things with this is he was doing to me, protecting himself. And look what's happened. So that was one of the worst things I kept. I couldn't get it out of my head. In the group, what I learned to do, I'm on the bike path with my brother where the assault happened. I, um, in my mind, in my artwork, I planted a strawberry tree in place of that. So I could see that instead of my brother. And uh, that really helped me. That's really nice. Thank you for sharing, Maggie. Um, You're welcome. And I hope, you know, that this um, finds some comfort to other survivors who are listening to this um, because, you know, we all have stories to share and it's very important to to share those stories because it's the only way that will create that awareness about the impacts of homicide and how they affect our community and how they affect our families, our friends, our co-workers, and how through support and advocacy, we're also able to um, move forward in our grief journey um, and, and always keep our loved one's memories alive. So thank you for joining us. Um, if you have any questions, please email us. Um, all the information will be on our uh, description box below.